Hey guys, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program! Twitchy's modded career mode! Last time we went out and finally got ourselves into orbit, but because of some of the self restrictions I've placed upon myself in the form of the NIMBY, that is the Not In My Backyard mod, I had to try and pinpoint the landing coming back. First time did well, second time, not so much. That means that we need to try and figure out some sort of transportation system from the Kerbal Space Center west over the mountains towards a little valley where I Project IKEA 0.5 lies. Unfortunately for the engineers on this project, my personal restrictions are not the only ones in place. At this early point in career mode, we only have access to certain types of engines and certain types of uh, aerodynamic structures. One of the things that I do have installed though is tweak scale. Now some of you might call this cheating and to you I go the most measured and mature response I could possibly come up with. The main reason that I'm not overly bothered about it is mainly that I am shrinking down the parts, which some of you might be like, oh, well, that's lighter, so that's cheating. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. But also, I'm restricted in the amount of power it can output, how much fuel we're carrying, stuff like that. So anyway, my idea, as you might have noticed, this does not really look that much like a plane. Uh, it kind of is going to function more like a jet-powered rocket. Uh, my plan is to just get out to where we need to go and pick up the stuff from, pop some parachutes when we're up and over the uh, correct little area that we're at, and then land down like a standard rocket on my, my jet exhaust down there. Uh, then take off in a VTOL capability and fly back. It should be as simple as that, right? We're only trying to move some people around, so we've got uh, a, a, a scientist, sorry, a pilot up top and a room for the scientist down below. I spend a lot of time mucking around with the fins here. You can see that I'm a, a little bit confused because whilst I was putting down four fins at the bottom, I got the uh, center of lift to line up quite nicely with the center of mass. But the moment I tried to make it two fins on, uh, on the sides and then another two fins top and bottom, so we should still be four fins, it messed up the entire center of lift. I, I'm not overly sure why. On the launch pad, despite the little um, jaunty tip to the side, we've got Valentina in charge and Gilly Kerman coming along to pick out all the science from the probe. Valentina driving it like a pro, and I've got to say, this is going incredibly well. So much better than I actually thought it would go, despite the fact that we've got four Four Juno engines on the bottom. I was kind of expecting us to like, lift up a little bit, try and nose forward, not have the amount of lift from either the wings or the engine and slam into the floor at an accelerated rate, perhaps like two times the speed of sound. It's things that happen quite often. But no, for some reason, we just took off. We pointed in the right direction. We managed to make our way over the top of the mountains, which in and of itself is quite an achievement. If you ever have like an early early career mode plane with just like Junos and Fins and stuff like that. Trying to trying to get over the top of the mountains is tough. Trying to get over the top of mountains in a late game plane using just Junos is tough. Because Junos, they don't like to uh, air breathe up too high because there's not as much oxygen up there. It, it kind of makes sense. Parachutes deployed and we begin the favourite part of Kerbal Plummet program. That's right, the plummet down to the surface. It takes forever. And, oh, oh, I hate it. But it gives me uh, plenty of time to talk to people in stream and a little time to remind you that if you do want to watch all this recording go down, feel free to join me at stream times Tuesdays and Saturdays. But well, there we kind of managed to break a, a, an engine coming down on the parachutes. That's, that's not great, but I've decided it's not like mission critical. Spoilers, it is. But I'm uh, going to go and check out the probe. we got everything that we needed to do, and uh, we're going to get Gilly to do a cheeky little bit of surface sampling while he's out there. In fact, it wasn't a surface sample. It was an EVA report, because, of course, we do not have the technology for surface samples right now. So Gilly tries to figure out how to get up and back into the plane there. Works out kind of well, actually. In the grand scheme of things, he only fell off once, so that's all good. And now we're going to try and take off with the three Juno engines, and as you can see, yeah, it's not great. A small development process later and we find ourselves back over the mountains, this time with your control, at least a little bit in theory with the uh, upright fin in the middle there. But unfortunately landing doesn't go exactly as planned, we don't keep upright and we fall over. Unperturbed we send Gilly out to go and pick up the science from the pod and run him back and try the various methods we can think of to try and get this uh, vehicle looking at least in the right direction so that when we fire off the engines we can take off. Unfortunately that also does not work and I get, get into a spiral of development hell. For some reason I feel that we need some sort of uh, landing gear replacement just so that we can like turn ourselves down like take off at the a reasonable pace and actually initial tests prove to be quite successful until it comes to actually flying our plane where unfortunately the wonderful self-controlling plane that we had now turns into a lawn dart that likes to hit the floor over and over and over again and let me leave this here as a lesson to you that actually if you've got a good plan going just 
Just stick with the first one. It'll work out eventually, surely. Having realised that I've lost my way during this development process here, I turn around to the stream that I've been watching, and I have a little heart to heart here, and we strip the whole whole system back down to its original specifications. The only reason the original plan failed was because there was a slight discrepancy in the angle that we came down relative to the floor, thus putting all the pressure of landing onto one of the engines. Now, there are two ways of fixing this. We can either come down slower or we can come down uh, on a relative tilt to the floor. I've decided to go with the come down slower option and put extra parachutes on board. Coming over the mountains, Gilly's mind is firmly fixed on the science that he's going to be getting. Valentina's on trying to find a nice flat place to land. The techs have done their job and the machine is handling well, but still, the landing is ahead. Snap of the parachute and eyes cast downwards, 5.8 meters per second. It's fast, but with intolerances. It's all in the slimy tentacles of the Kraken now. May he have mercy on my physics. I do like a good to music time lapse. If you guys enjoyed that, do let me know. It's not normally something I do during a Kerbal video, so uh, feedback is greatly appreciated. So with the science that we got there, it's time for great deliberations. Landing gear, obviously very high on my list of priorities. We're going to definitely be grabbing those. Full disclosure, so you don't feel like I'm pulling a bamboozle on you, this next bit of footage is actually from the stream afterwards. Turns out Gene Kerman has been sat on a contract that enables us to level up our pilots. In fact, he's been sat on uh, contracts that enable us to level up all our Kerbals, but the one that is available to us right now is to level up our pilots. And we're going to do this mission with the plane that we've literally just used. It's proved itself and its long-range capabilities, and this contract requires us to take a pilot from the runway to the island runway. Runway. It should be nice and simple with this ve vessel, right? The pilot I have chosen is, of course, a Valentino Kerman. One of the main reasons that we can't choose anybody else is because we have cast Jebediah aside into the water. And in fact, uh, Valentina having a look at Jebediah down below there, she seems to be fairly happy to see her colleague stranded alone. In fact, she even claps her hands. At some point, maybe there will be some sort of resistance movement that will uh, drop stuff out to Jeb. We're going to have to do that uh, within the next couple of episodes if we're going to. I say that. I've got the next couple of episodes already recorded. We're going to have to figure out something about that on a stream. But the flight path is looking incredibly good. In fact, we are even trying to get our way up to something like the speed of sound. I realise when the aerodynamic effects come in that maybe that's going a little bit too fast. And we form a bit of a nosedive. Valentina's classic roll around as you're diving. Uh, pop the parachutes and that kind of stabilises where we need to be. I do a little bit of nose diving to try and direct wrecked us in a slightly controlled manner obviously the wings are providing some lift and if i push them away from the direction i want to go then obviously i'm going to be falling in the direction i do want to go uh, and the parachutes while slowing us down do not stop our lateral movement so that's nice and wonderful back in kerbal planet program oh man it's it's really it's really quite painful to stand and watch this because you know i stand all the time to do no to sit and watch this uh, and i would like uh, some some way some way of going Right, I'm over. I'm over it. It's good now, right? I'm gonna be safe. I'm below like crash tolerance levels. Let's hit the go button. I I, I wish that was a thing. All right, so we're gonna grab a Valentine, uh, Va Valentina, Valentina out and get all the science that we can. The EVA, the crew reports. Unfortunately, this vessel doesn't actually have any science on it at the moment, so it's a bit limited just as a transport vessel. You may have noticed that I am just referring to this vessel as the vessel. The main reason for that is that we didn't actually come up with a working name for it. I, I believe the working title, the sorry, the 
concept title, if you will. It's called Science Get because we had to get the science out of the probe across the mountain. Uh, that's not a good working name. So uh, if I could have some suggestions down below, I would really, really like to uh, have a, a fitting name to release this onto the workshop. So people who are str also struggling with early mission flying capabilities, early career mode flying capabilities, can, uh, can, can bask in the glory of this fully working jet powered missile thing that we seem to have built here. Jet powered missile and not quite conventional it may well be, but we seem to be getting exactly back to where we want to be. This is a beautiful, probably my most pinpointed landing to date. I mean, even the earlier missions we kind of landed in the grasslands rather than on this nice little biome around the KSC. Once again, Kerbal Planet Program, I think you might be able to see why I'm not overly keen on this uh, part of the game. But that said, we, we, we don't really have anything else that we can do. I mean, like I suppose now we have landing gears and we can work on that. But up until the development of this craft, we didn't really have any other way of working with it. So the radial parachutes have inside textures, but the, uh, the inline ones do not. That's uh, very interesting. And that's Valentina done with her mission. We're just going to grab a little bit of extra science just, just so we can get the extra science. Let's not waste that time. And that just leaves me to show you the traditional go gather the science from the KSC contracts that we have been doing recently. I start with some sort of idea of making a giant jet powered vehicle. Cool. Turns out that's not actually what I wanted to do. Wow, uh, the stream advised me that actually, as I've got the robotic power, I should probably use some robotic power to keep us moving about. And, and I kind of agreed with them in the end, despite the, the lack of cool that was actually there. Bob Kerman, our man, to get in the, the cockpit there. And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. Well, we're going to actually get a Kerbal into orbit. I think it's time that we did that and got all beautiful things going off like that. If you enjoyed what you watched, please do feel free to leave me a like. That would be very much appreciated. If you are new to the channel, give us a subscribe. I will be releasing more of these as and when we can. Generally, I'm aiming for about weekly, but uh, I record four hours a week, so that should definitely be easy enough to keep up with. Uh, and I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!